Chapter 15. The Herman W. Block Memorial Library. This air conditioning unit didn't work very good, and there was only one fan, and from the minute me and Win dixie got in the library, he hogged it all. He lay right in front of it and wagged his tail and let it blow air fur all over around. Some of his fur was pretty loose and blew right off of him like a dandelion puff. I worried about him hogging the fan, and I worried about the fan blowing him bald. But Miss Franny said not to worry about either thing, that Win dixie could hang could hog the fan if he wanted. She had never in her life seen a dog made bald by a fan. Sometimes when Miss Franny was telling a story, she would have a fit. They were small fits, and they didn't last long, but that but what would happen was she would get forget what she was saying. She would just stop and start to shake like a little leaf. And when that happened, Win Dixie would get up from the fan and sit right at Miss Franny's block side. He would sit up tall, protecting her with his ears standing up straight on his head like soldiers. And when Miss Franny stopped shaking and started talking again, Win Dixie would lick her hand and lie back down in front of the fan. Whenever Miss Franny had one of her fits, it reminded me of Win Dixie in a thunderstorm. There were a lot of thunderstorms that summer, and I got real good at holding on to Win Dixie whenever they came. I held on to him and comforted him and whispered to him and rocked him, just the same way he tried to comfort Miss Franny when she had her fits. Only I held on to Win Dixie for another reason, too. I held on to him tight so he wouldn't run away. It all made me think about Gloria Dump. I wondered who comforted her when she heard those bottles knocking together, those ghosts chattering about the things she had done wrong. I wanted to comfort Gloria Dump, and I decided the best way to do that would be to read her a book, read it to her loud enough to keep the ghosts away. And so I asked Miss Franny, I said, Miss Franny, I've got a grown-up friend whose eyes are going on her, and I would like to read her a book out loud. Do you have any suggestions? Suggestions? Miss Franny said, yes, ma'am, I have suggestions. Of course I have suggestions. How about David Copperfield? Who is he? asked her. David Copperfield is the title of a book, Opal said Franny. Oh, well, what's it about? It's about a boy grown up. It's been a tradition in my family to read the book aloud. My great-grandfather, Limitus, read the book aloud to my grandfather every year. And when my father was old enough, was an old man, it, I read it aloud to him. It sure must be a good book, I said. Why, that book matters so much to Limitus that he even took a copy of it with him when he went off to fight in the Civil War. He was just a boy, you know. Limitus was your great-grandfather? Yes, ma'am, Limitus W. Block. Now there's a story. When Dixie yawned real big and lay down on his side with a thump and a sigh. I swear he knew that phrase. Now there's a story, and he knew it meant we weren't going anywhere real soon. Go ahead and tell it to me, Miss Franny, I said, and I sat down cross-legged next to Win Dixie. I pushed him and tried to get him to share the fan, but he pretended he was asleep, and he wouldn't move. I was all settled and ready for a good story when the door banged and pinched face Amanda Wilkins came in. Win Dixie sat up and stared at her. He tried out a smile on her, but she didn't smile back, and he lay down again. I'm ready for another book, Amanda said, slamming her book down on Miss Franny's desk. Well, said Miss Franny, maybe you wouldn't mind waiting. I'm telling India Opal a story about my great-grandfather. You are, of course, more than welcome to listen. It will be just one minute. Amanda sighed a real big dramatic sigh and stared past me. She pretended like she wasn't interested, but she was. I could tell. Come sit over here, said Miss Franny. I'll stand, thank you, said Amanda. Suit yourself, Miss Franny shrugged. Now, where was I? Oh, yes, Limitus. Limitus W. Block.